Welcome to ElectroArc. Today what we want to do for you is just do a quick demonstration of one of our machines and show you how to remove a broken tap. So what we have here today, this is one of our tabletop machines. This is in our tap zapper line. Uh, so what this machine is, this has an AC as an output for the power supply. Uh, we also make models that use a DC output. And the main difference there is just going to be, uh, just going to be dependent on about how much carbide you have to remove. Uh, if you have an abundance of carbide tooling, we might guide you a little bit more toward a DC model over the AC, um, just because they're slightly more efficient on the carbide tooling. But either power supply will be able to remove pretty much any type of tooling, whether it be high-speed steel, uh, you know, aluminums, uh, exotic metals like Inconel, or carbide tooling. So both power supplies can remove most types of materials like that. Um, so with this machine here, um, what the setup is we have, uh, this is our IQ which means in the quill head. So this is a heavy duty precision head. Uh, so this head is built directly into the quill housing of our fixture. Uh, this machine has an auto feed feature. So you've got variable speed controls which can go up to about an inch per minute. Um, we also have portable models. Um, so one example of that would be our portable Arker head. So this is a portable head that um, has a LED system which is built right into the, uh, the housing of the head. So you just have a set of green, yellow, and red LEDs. Uh, so that's just going to tell your operator where the optimum feed rate is. You just want to try to keep it between the green to yellow range. Uh, then at the top of the head you see we just have a shank up here, just a half inch diameter by two inches long. Uh, so you're just going to be able to chuck that up into any of your machine tools uh, that use basic uh, three-point chuck, um, CNC machines, mills, drill press, that type of stuff. Uh, or it can also be used in one of our portable magnetic base fixtures. Uh, so that's one of the portable heads we have. Um, our DC machines are going to use similar heads, um, but they will be slightly different. Um, there is a head that can be used in that same manner. Um, as, you know, chuck it up into your machine tools. Um, and then it w we also have a servo feed head. Uh, so a few different options as far as head setups go. Um, so what we want to do is basically um, I just have a aluminum block here. So this is just a one inch thick aluminum block. Uh, so we're going to thread a 3 8 inch tap through there. And there you should be able to see. Got the tap on the other side there. So we'll just break this off. And here you can see that what, uh, how much tap we have left. Uh, so again, that's about one inch thick block uh, and a 3 8 inch tap. So with that, um, the electrodes we're using um, on a tap, the electrode is going to be 50% of the tap diameter. Uh, so as far as alignment goes, you just want to make sure that you're centered over the, over the middle of the tap. Because uh, what we're going to do is end up just taking out just the core. The flutes will be left behind, uh, so you're not going to damage your parts at all. And uh, just as an example of that, how we want that to look. So here you can see is a, a tap that was done. Uh, so our electrodes are hollow. Um, so we are, it will create a core down the center, but once you get all the way through, that'll fall out. But you can see with the center removed, the flutes, the flutes are uh, going to be free. So once you get all the way through there, you'll just be able to pick those right out of the hole. All right. So with that, we will get started here. Um, our machines, we do have three components to how our machines work. Uh, we have head vibration. So the head itself will oscillate up and down, only moves about 20 thousandths of an inch, but that's what makes and breaks the electrical arc. Uh, we have coolant that flows. So as I mentioned, the electrodes are hollow. So coolant will flow down through the center of the electrode and it does two things. Basically keeps everything cool so you're not going to get any heat distortion. Um, but it also flushes out the particles as it's being disintegrated. And then of course the third thing is uh, electrical current that's being uh, sent through the electrode. 
And uh, you know, kind of a common question is, uh, you know, with electricity being passed through there, is is it dangerous? Am I going to get shocked or burned? Uh, the answer to that is no. Um, you know, obviously you want to make sure everything is properly grounded, but our machines are a low voltage output. Uh, so the maximum output voltage of our biggest machine is only about 30 volts. Um, but as long as you're using the machines correctly, you're not going to get injured in any way. All right, so we have a splash bag here. That's just going to help us contain our coolant. Uh, this coolant, because it does flush as well, comes out at about 90 PSI. So we just want to put a couple rags there just to help keep the bag down. All right. Well, we, on the front of our machines, uh, we just have three push buttons, so a very simple operation. Uh, we have one for head vibration, one for coolant flow, and then the third for the disintegration. So I'm going to start by feeding manually uh, with our auto feed machine. We do have the option to feed manually with the hand wheel. And again, this machine has the LED system that's built right into the head. So I'm just feeding it so that I stay in the green to yellow range. Um, but with our machines, uh, this one specifically, we do have an auto feed system. So I could engage this plug here, turn that on, and then it becomes basically hands-free for your operator. Um, and with the variable speed controls, again, you just want to set it so that your LEDs are staying in that nominal range. Now with this tabletop machine uh, being a T-slotted table, um, makes it easy to secure your parts, but also we have a tray that runs around the outside of the table, so it's going to allow coolant to just flow back down into the internal tank and uh, be recirculated through the machine. Now with this also we do have a depth gauge here along the side on our picture. So as far as doing like a blind hole, um, you'd be able to preset a depth that you want it to disintegrate to. And with the adjustable depth stop, uh, you can have it, uh, so once it reaches the depth you want it to go to, uh, it will trigger that depth stop, which will automatically shut the machine down for you. And with that, uh, looks like we are all the way through. So I just want to use a pick there. So there you can see We've gone completely through the hole. And then we have the remnants here of the tap. So you can see the flutes are intact. And then here was the core that came off. So now all you would want to do, you might be able to see on the video that there was just a little bit of residue. Uh, that's just there from uh, the disintegration process. So all we want to do is just run a new tap through there and that will clean out the hole for you. And you can see how easy that tap threads right back in there. So there we go, that part's all ready to go back to work. Uh, so as far as bolts go, we have a couple different methods for removing bolts. Here you can see a stud, uh, we used a round electrode and uh, you, you could use an easy out uh, to remove that. You know, once you disintegrate your hole, use your easy out. Uh, we can also do shaped electrodes. So if you can see here, this one was done in a square. So again, you could use a square electrode, burn a hole in there, uh, you know, a half inch square, for example, and use a ratcheting tool to spin it back out. Um, as far as our fixtures go, so obviously this one's mounted to a tabletop, but we do have portable magnetic base fixtures, which are gonna operate in this pretty well same type of manner. So 
Uh, let's take a quick look at that. So we just have a couple locking levers on these. And uh, so with this machine, we've got our vertical column and our horizontal cross arm here. So this cross arm can rotate 360 degrees around that vertical column axis. Uh, so that would allow you on a table model, for example, to be able, uh, if you had a large part that didn't fit on the table, you could spin this head around and use it off the table. The disintegrating head themselves can also rotate 360 degrees around the cross arm axis. Uh, so that's going to allow you to position the head horizontally, any angle in between, and they can even operate inverted. Uh, so again, if you had something large, and um, you could use this off the table. Um, but our portable fixtures will look mostly like this. You might have a single barrel cross arm, but otherwise it would be just like this, but will be mounted on a magnetic base. So that's going to be able to allow you to take your disintegrating process to anywhere in the shop, use it on large parts, uh, small parts for a tabletop, um, pretty well anywhere. Um, as far as the electrodes go, uh, kind of some common questions. Uh, what, are they, what are the electrodes made out of and how long do they last? Uh, the electrode we used here is a material called molybdenum. Uh, so it's a very durable material. It's uh, good for the smaller diameter electrodes. Um, and it then erodes at a rate of only three-eighths of an inch of the electrode for every inch of tool steel that you disintegrate through. Uh, so you're going to be able to get a number of taps or bolts out for uh, each electrode. Um, we do also make for a larger machines, uh, larger diameters, can be a graphite electrode. And those are going to erode at only one-eighth of an inch for every inch you disintegrate through. So again, you're going to get a number of pieces of broken tooling out with each one. And just some standard sizes are, uh, as far as lengths, you know, we make them in 6 inch, 9 inch, or 12 inch lengths. Um, uh, some other questions that are commonly asked, uh, maintenance wise, what, what is required with our machines? Uh, they're extremely low maintenance. Uh, all you really need to worry about is keeping clean coolant through it. Um, and as far as, since we're on the top of coolant, uh, what types of coolant? Um, the machines, we sell a water primer, so it's just a water soluble uh, coolant that, you know, we want you to run through it. Uh, they can operate on fresh water. Uh, we've got some options uh, for a direct valve connection on the back of the machine so you could hook up a, a water line straight to the machine. Um, if you are going to run fresh water through it, you just want to make sure by the, you know, when you're done using the machine before you put it away, just run a little bit of uh, water soluble coolant. Um, no oil based and no synthetics. Um, but as far as the maintenance goes again, so just keeping clean coolant through it, a tabletop machine like this you would want to just wipe the table down, maybe with just a light lubricating oil, uh, WD-40 or something like that, uh, just to help prevent corrosion on the tabletop. Other than that, there is no maintenance for our machines. Um, size ranges, um, as far as what kind of tooling you can remove, uh, our, the smallest tap that can be removed is an OT-80. Uh, so we have electrodes that are as small as a 20 thousandths of an inch. Uh, so extremely small electrodes. And on the large size, um, our largest machines can um, remove, like this machine specifically, could remove a two-inch diameter tap in a single pass. Um, but we do also have larger power supplies that can do tooling even larger than that. Um, and you can always do large diameters in multiple passes. So there's really not much limit as far as the upper end of the machines go. So those are some common questions uh, that customers typically ask. Um, of course, you may have some specific questions about your exact application. Um, which we can answer at any time. You can give us a call or email us and we'll be happy to help you. Um, so with that, uh, let us know what we can do to help you out.